Hey there, Dengus Chu here. Today's video is about installing a set of docking lights onto the green machine. The lights I'm going to be installing is this 10 inch 60 watt LED unit. This unit was manufactured and sent to me by a company called Oxbeam, so I'll put a link to them in the description so you can check that out. And they look to retail on the website for about $67, $70 say. Now I also received this wiring loom, which is pretty much complete. It allows you to take this unit, essentially solder a few wires to this, depending on where you want to mount it, how much lead you need. And then you've got a positive and negative go straight to your battery. You've got a fuse, you've got a relay, you've got a switch. It's all pretty much set up, ready to go. One thing I will say though is this unit, it's got a nice weight to it, feels quite strong, has that IP67 rating, but pretty quickly I'm getting the sense that this wiring loom really is made for more a full drive environment where it's all inside the cabin of a car. So I'm going to be replacing quite a bit of this wiring to sort of marinize it and make it much more waterproof. Very comfortable with the unit itself, not so comfortable with the wiring supplied, so we'll go through that. When I say the wiring supplied, it was sent to me, but it's sold separately. So if you're looking to put these lights in your boat, I would recommend just ordering the light itself and then following these instructions to make your own wiring loom that's waterproof for your boat. These lights also came with some mounting hardware, which are aimed at mounting the light onto a flat surface. That's okay if you're gonna put it on a deck or put it on top of the wheelhouse or whatever. In my case, I'm going to mount it onto the bar, the grab rail uh, above the dash on the green machine. So I jumped online and I ordered some round bar holders. So I'll show you those. I haven't actually had a good look at these yet. So, so the unit supplied is like this. Perfectly adequate if you're going to put it onto a flat surface. But what I've got here is ones that are similar in that they'll go this way but they've got this round section that can be tightened up with these Allen keys. So I'll be putting that around the bar on the green machine. These come in all different sizes. So I just measured that bar, which turned to be one inch and got the corresponding mounting brackets. What I'll do now is take the loom over and just lay it out in the ground. Although I'm not convinced of its suitability for use in an open boat, it's certainly a good design and it's certainly the circuit we're gonna be copying. So we'll consider it documentation. The way this loom's configured, is we've got these two ring terminals that go to our positive and negative and then it goes straight here to a blade fuse holder and the fuse in here is a 30 amp. From there we come into our four pin relay and then the relay goes off to a switch that activates the relay so that's obviously your, your on off switch so it's a push on push off switch. It's a little bit that sort of style that maybe you know you'd call a nurse if you were stuck on the toilet or something so I think we'll swap that out for one of those toggle switches. And then these are the leads that go to the lights themselves. These have two nicely covered spade connectors on them, but because I'm going to be running them through a small hole, I'll probably cut those off and solder onto the lights themselves. So what I'm looking to do is copy this exact design, nothing wrong with the circuit itself, put a waterproof switch where this one goes. I will probably use this relay and relay holder for now and I'll swap this out for a waterproof fuse holder as well. And then I'll just use some marine cable for here. So I'll show you where I'm gonna put them on the boat and how I'm thinking of running the cable. My plan is to mount them up here above the driver position. I was gonna put them more central, but the way this boat ties up, you actually have to get out of the boat over the bow. So I don't wanna divide the space into two small sections to get out. By keeping them over this side, I leave the whole other side for actually jumping over the bar. In order to keep it a little bit neat as well, I'm gonna try and drill through the top here and run the wire inside this tube, which means trying to get under the dash and find the right location to drill here. It's gonna be a little bit fiddly, but I think it's gonna be a lot nicer than just cable tying it down the outside. After that, all the wiring is just gonna stay under the dash. Those of you who saw the part one of wiring the electrics in a boat will have seen how I have a lead from the battery to the front of the boat and that it comes to a two pin post. I'm gonna connect these lights directly to that two pin post because they've got a fuse of their own and the current draw of these lights exceeds 
the fuse I've got go into my terminal blocks. And I don't want to bump that up because it's got a lot of low current devices on that, that terminal blocks, those circuits. So my plan is to leave all the low current draw devices on those terminal blocks, those bus bars under the dash on that 10 amp circuit. And then where the battery comes to the two post terminal, I'm going to hook this straight to there, give it its own 30 amp fuse and run from there. You might also remember that originally I put a 20 amp fuse right at the battery. So because of this, I may need to, it's looking like I'm going to need to up that to a 30 amp. Then I'll have to look at how I go with this 12 gauge wire, whether it gets too hot, but we'll look into it. The other thing to bear in mind is these are docking lights. You don't drive around with them on. I'm expecting to only really have them on for maybe a minute at a time. But if you are looking at having them on for an extended period of time, we'll just have to sort of do the maths and see on what sort of gauge wire you need to support that current draw. We'll just have a really quick sticky beak at that circuit on the board before I start making it on the bench. This positive and negative down here, that represents that two post terminal block I've got under the dash. And really that's just an extension of the positive and negative that I have on the battery. So I've got some relatively thick wires from the battery up to this. So for all intents and purposes, you can think of that as the battery. The positive is then going to go straight to a fuse holder, to a 30 amp fuse holder. And then that's going to come in and go to pin 30 on the relay. And it's also going to go to one side of the on off switch. The negative is going to come here to pin 86 on the relay and is also going to go straight to the negative side of the lights themselves. Then when I close this switch, current can flow from the positive, through the fuse, through the relay and then back to ground. And as soon as current flows along this way, this positive is connected here. Positive power comes out pin 87 and we complete the circuits and the lights come on. The whole purpose of that is not having the full current draw for these lights coming through the switch itself. The switch has a really small amount of current flowing through it. It's just that small amount needed to activate the relay and the main part comes through the relay. So that's the circuit. It's relatively straightforward. It's a very classic circuit for a single four pin relay. Very similar to activating a starter motor. You turn the key, the current for the starter motor doesn't flow through the key in your, on your boat. The current flows through the relay the key just sends a small, small amount of current to the solenoid or the relay that starts the boat. So this is a classic relay activated circuit. There's nothing particularly special going on here. So this is what we're going to make. So let's jump over to the bench and we'll start making our own wiring loom for it. I'll put the lights themselves aside for a moment and the mounting hardware and everything. And we'll just focus on the relay and the switching circuit to start with. I think it's conceptually simpler if we sort of start at one end and move out. So I'm going to start by taking the wire that's going to go to the positive terminal on my battery essentially. First thing I'm going to do from the positive terminal is go to a fuse holder. So I've got one of these fuse holders that's relatively waterproof. It's designed for a marine environment. Just going to cut the loop in half and then strip both ends. I'm just going to take the fuse out of the supplied wiring loom and use that. So a 30 amp fuse. Now I'm just going to solder on a ring connector with a bit of heat shrink tube that's the correct size to go onto my two pin post. In which case that's an 8 mil post. Now I am going to reuse this relay and relay holder because I don't have anything better at this stage. Once again nothing inherently wrong with it. I'm just it's not really designed for marine environment, that's all. But it'll certainly get us by to get this up and running. And it's going to be under the dash. I'm going to cut the old fuse holder off the relay, off the loom. And we're not going to be using any of that now. These terminal lugs were also a bit too large for the two post cable I had. Now I've just stripped the main positive and negative wires that were going to the battery before. The positive I'm going to connect up to my fuse holder and the negative I'm going to put a similar ring on the end so it can go straight to the negative. Just the usual solder and heat shrink routine on this connection. Now we've got positive power to pin 30 and negative going to 86. Now 86 also sends negative to the lights themselves so we've already got that sort of junction there we only need the one negative. On this circuit they also have a thin wire connected to pin 30 which is where the main 
positive voltage for the light goes in and they've just used as a junction point to pick up some more current to, to send to the switch. We could attach our switch straight to the positive here, but ideally you'd do it here because if you do it right back here, you're gonna have to fuse that again separately. So it's good that we've got the fuse here. So what I'm gonna do here is where they've got the wires for the switch, I'm going to cut the switch off. The switch actually has a junction on it. So the switch itself, is designed to be replaceable. So I'll keep that switch somewhere. It's a perfectly valid switch used in the right context. But I'm gonna cut this connector off so we can wire it to our marine switch. This particular cable is a three wire cable because the supplied switch has a little indicator LED to show whether it's on or off. I'm not gonna be using that. So all I need is the red and the yellow wire from in here. The black is a ground so that you can activate the LED. All I need to do is have my switch connect the red wire to the yellow wire and ignore the black wire. And when I do that, current will flow through the yellow wire into pin 85 on the relay and allow the lights to come on. All these components are within reasonably close proximity of each other under the dash. So I'm only gonna give myself about a less than a meter of wire. So now I'll strip the red and yellow and we'll get ready to hook those up to this marine switch. This switch, like all the other switches, they all match. Is one of these fully rubber encased switches. Because I can feed this switch from behind the dash through, I'm just gonna solder these connectors because there's no need to get it through the dash before I connect it. So I'll cut these bullet connectors off and solder it up. Now we're pretty much ready to start uh, attacking the lights themselves. The relay now goes to two ring connectors that are more suitable size for my terminal block. And I've got the waterproof fuse holder. The activation wires to the relay now go to a waterproof marine switch. I've got this soldered with some heat shrink on it, but I'm just gonna put a bit of electrical tape. I probably should have put a larger heat shrink over the whole thing, but I'll just tape that up to protect it as well. If you're gonna use tape and you can afford it, another thing I really like when you're doing marine wiring is self-amalgamating tape. It sort of basically bonds to itself at a, almost a chemical level, I think, and makes quite a nice uh, waterproof and permanent taping cover compared to standard sort of sticky electrical tape. The lights themselves have got a reasonably short tail on them, but it's good, it's long enough just to get inside that tubing so there won't be any joins outside the tubing. Looking at this wiring, it's thinner than the wire that I've got running from the back of the boat to the front. So I'm pretty confident that 12 gauge wire is gonna be up to carrying the current these lights require. What I'm gonna do now is solder a length of twin core wire straight to this that I can feed through the tubing, the, the sort of the, the windscreen grab rail sort of thing. And once it's through, I'll then, that'll be the final solder that I do in the boat when I connect it up to the relay. Now I've got this twin core attached to the lights. I'm gonna leave this end just completely together, not stripped or anything, because I wanna make this as easy as possible to feed down through that bar. So we'll go up to the boat now. I think I'll start by mounting the lights physically to the bar and then I'll go and drill the bar. These are the mounting brackets I'm gonna to use to put it onto the bar. They come with a bolt that goes right through the center of them this way and a nylock nut on the end of that. Then once that bolts out, this section drops out so I can slip this under the bar and put this on so I don't need access to the end of the bar or anything like that. Once it's on the bar, this bolt on the top here comes down through the bottom of the bracket and that lets you attach it and just stop it moving around if it is rocking around at all. I'm going to use these bolts to attach the light. These are the ones that came with it, a bit shorter. The ones that came with it I think are a bit more attractive. They've got a little Allen key in the middle, a domed head, but they're just a bit too short. So this is what I'm going to go with. These bolts are unfortunately slightly too long. So I'm just gonna go grab a few washers and some spring washers just to pat it out a little bit. This bracket's also slotted, so I'm gonna mount it up as high as I can. I'm gonna shuffle this light across a little bit to starboard. 
The reason for that is I want this wire to come down this pipe here, so the closer that is to here the better. But also I think aesthetically the best thing is to have the centre of the helm and the centre of the lights line up. So I'll line those two points up and then I'll lock those clamps down. That's feeling really secure now. Very happy that's not going to flop around even in hard chop or anything like that. The last thing you want to do is be driving along, pounding through waves, the next thing your lights just dip down, you know, facing the deck. So very happy with that. All right, I'm going to grab a drill and see if we can feed this wire down the inside. I'm not going to drill on the top here. I'm going to sort of drill under here a bit because I don't want this to catch too much water. I'm obviously going to have to completely seal it with Sikaflex or something so that water doesn't start tracking down there, but I may as well help a little bit by having it on the side. So here's the hole drilled. I don't know if you can just vaguely see. It's also drilled through the back side of this horizontal post going into the vertical one. Under the dash I'm in luck because you can see the paint's burnt away where this bar was welded on. So I'm going to aim for the centre of that paint mark and hope for the best. There's now a hole under the dash and there's not a hole on the top of the deck so looks like we hit the spot. Now I'm going to try and feed the wire through. Obviously feeding it through the top is going to be nice and easy. When it gets to the bottom I think it's going to catch on an edge a little bit but hoping with a bit of wire or something I can fish it through. It's hooked through on the other end now which means I can feed this in and I can get my soldered joint inside the railing. I'm going to seal this up and protect the wire from chafing on the sharp metal edge with um, a bit of Sikaflex. So now I'm going to solder up the end that's come through under the dash. I'm going to attach the positive to pin 87 on the relay, that's the one that goes gets active, positive 12 volts when the relay is activated by the switch, and the other one just going to ground. Now it's through the hole, I'm just going to separate these wires, get them ready for soldering together, and do the same with the two leads from the original loom going to the relay. I'm just going to use a couple of these low temperature solder heat shrink combination connectors for this one just because it's easier when I'm in the boat. Same as before I'm just going to put a bit of electrical tape over those heat shrink connectors. A little bit of extra protection keep them a little bit neater. What I'm going to do now is go and take the fuse out of the battery box. That way I can connect the positive and negative main power leads to the terminal block under the dash without running the risk that as you run a spanner over that you're going to arc between the two and blow the fuse anyway. So here's what we've got now. We've got the wire coming from the light itself down through the deck. The positive and the negative wired to our two pin terminal block. We've got our relay sort of dangling, our fuse holder sort of dangling, which I'll neat that with cable ties in a second and the switch itself here that has to go through the dash. This is the switch mounted up now. We're out on the water in daylight so I'll, I'll sort of run you through the setup quickly. We've got this switch through, pushed through from the back and a waterproof jacket over the top. All the rest of the wiring's under the dash as you saw but all sort of held up neatly with cable ties now. I put a whole lot of uh, Sikaflex around the hole where this wire came through. Not particularly neat but I might get a razor blade and neaten that up. I did that in a little bit of rush. I'm happy with these brackets, it mounts really well. I'm actually happy with this unit, it's, it sits there quite nicely, it's not in the way. I look under it when I'm driving, you look over it when you're standing up, so I'm really happy with the position as well. It wouldn't be much of an installation video if we didn't come out at night and test these lights, so here we are, nice calm night, which is good. You probably can't see me at all. Let me turn the uh, little cabin light on. It feels like telling stories around a campfire now. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to head over to the general pontoon I tie up normally. Um, you probably won't get a sense of how dark it is on a camera because things are a little bit darker, but it is a really black corner of um, corner of the island, so and it can be quite hard pulling up there, just getting your bearings. The thing about docking lights is you really don't need to have them on the whole time. Often they're just about getting a bit of a sense of distance. Then often it's quite good to switch them off and just go back to using your night vision. But in this case, it's almost hard to pick that wharf from the others around it as well. So we'll head over there. 
I'll show you what, what it looks like normally and then we'll flick them on and see what difference it makes. Because of this shore of the islands very much in darkness, there's a few houses up on the hill but because it's quite a steep hill, none of that light actually makes it down to the waterline, which makes it very hard to pick these wharves out from each other. And this is really where this sort of docking light's amazingly useful. So I'll flick it on now. And then straight away you can see something like this wharf, this pontoon, really, really clearly. I was expecting this to be, because it's kind of a bar of LEDs, I was expecting it to be quite a diffuse light. But it's actually an incredibly focused spotlight. I'm really amazed by that. And then once you've picked up a wharf and you go, yep, that's what I'm aiming for, you can pretty much switch them off and complete the manoeuvre. Or leave them on, depending on what you want. But it's amazing how much they'll pick it out from quite a distance. I don't know how well that's going to come out on camera. But even across to the trees. Oh. <laughs> Try not to shine at people's windows. But it's got a really good range on it too. You can see there's a few rocks here, there's a little bit of a reef here. But it makes an amazing difference to what you can pick out, that's for sure. Well, thanks for watching. I've got to say I'm really, really happy with this unit. I think it's worked out really well. I was sent it by Oxbeam, but they didn't pay me to do a review or anything, so I feel like I can be pretty honest. Not that I wouldn't be even if they had, <laughs> but uh, no, I really like it. I, as I said earlier, I would definitely not run with the, the supplied loom in a boat. I think you do need to use more marinized components, but Having said that, the unit itself is sold separately and is very waterproof and seems to be made to a very high standard, so no complaints there. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope if you do have a unit like this you're installing, this video helps you. Take care and I'll catch you next time, see ya.